today for the Design Review Board of February 7th, if we could start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. So first we have attendance. So noted. And public comment. We do have a chance for any applicants to come up during theirs, but if anyone from the general public is here. Okay, we'll close public comment. We'll start with approval of the minutes. We've all had a chance to look at the January 17th minutes. If there's no changes, I look for so moved. motion. Motion by Clerk Brooke. Support. Support by Trustee Barnett. All in favor? Aye. 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 I almost called you treasurer. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's automatic, Clerk. <laughs> treasurer. <laughs> So next are on to signs, the new item. So we have 1087 Long Lake Road, Hudson's Place. Sure. And then we'll start with Andrea, and then if you want to come on up after and introduce yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Okay. okay, so what we have before you is a proposal for um, uh, a re re-naming, um, rebranding, if you will, of the former Pallet Pleaser, which everybody's familiar with, which is located up on your screen here. It is at the southwest corner of Telegraph and Long Lake, kind of in our backyard. Um, they are proposing a change in name as well as they're doing some interior remodeling. That is not for today's agenda. It's not? <laughs> no. Oh, I thought it was an H. <laughs> no. I literally figured it was for Hudson's Place. No, it's okay. That's, that's forthcoming. <laughs> I'm like, oh, nice job. This is really cool. <laughs> Um, so, okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so what they're proposing is they're, um, in addition to some interior remodeling, they're doing some rebranding. The property is zoned B3, as you can see highlighted on your screen up here. Um, they're proposing to keep a similar use as the pallet pleaser where people can come in and actually the applicant, I'm sure, can give you more information, to answer any questions about some of the remodeling and rebranding that they're doing. Um, it is not going to be a restaurant. They're still going to have food to be picked up and to be carried out. Um, but they are changing the name. And that is what they're here for uh, today, is to have you um, review a proposal for the new sign, which you can see up on your screen, which is actually more of a green and white with an, um, an LED um, uh, lighting, uh, internally LED lit lighting. The new name, the proposed name, it's Hudson's Place. Um, not affiliated with Hudson's, as maybe some people in here remember Hudson's, but Hudson's Place. Um, and um, the sign itself, they are permitted to have, based on their elevations, they are permitted to have a 13 square foot sign, and they have a 13 square foot sign. So there's no variances associated with it. Um, but the colors, as you can see on the renderings um, in the packet, it is a it is a green background with a um, as shown on the um, the the elevation below with the lighting. You can see that there's like a halo lighting. The sign itself is a three inch deep internally lit acrylic sign on a two two inch deep metal raceway. Um, I do want to point out too that in addition to the sign, the applicant is. Um, asking to paint the metal, um, what do you call the mullings? It's like aluminum trim. The aluminum trim, which runs between the windows. Along, yeah. Between the windows, which is on the elevation. They're currently like a black aluminum color. Uh, it's like silver. Silver aluminum. color. He's asking to paint that green. Uh -huh. So I mean, we we don't have an issue with it in 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 building as in planning as we see that green is a, a relatively neutral earth tone color. Um, if it was pink or you know a bright blue, that may be different. But I just wanted to at least point that out. The applicant has indicated that he's willing to forego that if that's something that the design review board is not interested in entertaining. But it would be minimal. It would be along the I think there is um about one two three about four of those or it actually looks like there's three of those panels in the center of the window. And then in addition to that, they are asking to add just a green vinyl over the door, which has the address. So I just want to make sure I point out all those elevation changes. Um, and then he can answer any questions related to that. But it does comply with our ordinance. You can see the sign as it is and the configuration as it currently is today. And that gives you a better idea of that aluminum um, framework that you can see that they're asking to paint green. Um, you can see um, if you if you can look along the shopping center, they all kind of they don't really have a designated band necessarily for for signage in the shopping center, but they're all um, aligned and the, it, this um, proposal would be compatible with other other signs within the center. Um, and with that, we are happy to answer any questions. And I would also ask the applicant too as well to introduce himself and explain their rebranding. 
Hi. Hi, my name is Tom Cuny, uh, owner of former Peter's Pal Pleaser for the last eight years. And now we're changing it to Hudson's Place, which is named after my son, Hudson. Oh, that's cool. So um, mainly the last couple few years, what I've noticed is a slowdown in traffic from prepared pickup foods because we sell fish by the pound that's all ready to go. So, and that's half of my store. The other half is uh, prepared foods that are in packages, which I'm still keeping. And we're still doing holiday orders and catering like always. But in the middle of my store, I plan to add pizza and gourmet coffee. So it will be like a gourmet coffee shop, which I hope brings in traffic to buy our uh, prepared foods. And um, that's kind of where all this is coming from. So we have a green theme, I guess sage green or like a mint green would be the best way to say it. But uh, that's what we're hoping to achieve here. And, you know, just looking, hoping to be able to better the community with great food and kind of give the community what's missing. Because I always eat around here and I feel like great thin crust pizza is something my customers all drive to like Birmingham to get. It's interesting, my uh, my daughter noticed that you were rebranding and she mentioned something to me before there was any announcement. She was so excited about the concept that you're putting in there. Thank you. And she's a foodie, believe me. Mm -hmm. And she noticed right away. So I wish you good luck with that. And I certainly, I find the green attractive, not because I'm a Spartan. I was but, just going to uh, say, I have issues. <laughs> it's not blue. My wife's a Spartan. <laughs> so she helped. But it's, it's nice. And it's a understated green. I think it's pretty sophisticated and looks very nice. Thank you. Will it be the whole, so I, I understand between the windows, but there's a large ban, and the only reason I'm worried, that's really loud, the only reason I'm worried a little bit about too much is we had that pure sleep debacle with too much blue. Is it just in between oh. the windows, or are you talking about the large band on top of it, it too? It, it's about an inch and a half thick, that metal frame goes around the windows. Can you go back to And in the sharp. middle. Yeah. It like connects the windows together. So you're not talking about doing that curved area, large aluminum on top. That curved area is going to be gone, if that makes sense. Because okay. that's just, it's like screw on metal. It's part of the old sign. Okay. So it and would just be the. Yeah, yeah. It would just be the window sills. It's like a perfect rectangle with three lines in the middle. Right. And it would be this similar color. Yes. And above the door, there's a metal frame box. That as well. Because that would match. Where the glass is now. Uh, yes, and and that glass is actually a glass panel screwed on over the this area glass. Here. Yeah, it's oh. it was all part of the old design, and um the new design is that velvet that you mentioned could either be like a frosted sticker on the inside, but it's something that gives it that green look. So or it could be green glass. I could have that made too, so it could be perfect, and um whichever works is what I'm willing to do. We'll point out. Looks great yellow to me. Blue so. make green. So you need yeah. us to make green. <laughs> it's a little battle, U of M, MSU. When do you hope to have that was all a good this one. Just that was So we, we've been working like 12, 14 hours a day, six, seven days a week for the last month and a half. Uh, we think we could be completely done with renovations by middle of next week. Oh, really? So I plan to have my staff come in and start training with the new POS system next week, Thursday, if not Friday or Saturday. And then probably a week after that is when I hope to open. Exciting. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Very exciting. Do you want to make a motion? Anyone have any other questions? No, I no? make a motion that oh. we... Uh, go you both want to make. This yeah. is great. You want to go I'll, ahead? I did. I'll second that motion. All right. Perfect. So motion by Trustee there. Barnett, okay. second by Clerk Brooke. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. This is great. Good luck. Good luck. And, yes. Thank you so much. All right. yeah. Thank you. Definitely stop by. All right, so next we have two, I have to put my glasses on. It's getting that age. Another food. Concept. 2398 Franklin Road with, is it Miro? Miro? Miro, but we don't have the uh, sign contractor is not here. They were notified. Okay. They are not yeah. here. Um, so it's up to the board's determination if you'd like to proceed or if you'd like to table this. Okay. Um, do you is wanna... the sign compliant? The sign is compliant. Um, I do want to point out that there apparently, um, I drove by there, I believe, yesterday, and there is a banner out there with the name. So I thought at least at the, if you are going to consider it, we would consider that the banner would have to be removed. I would recommend upon the installation of a sign. Yeah, and it's not the sign and contractor. It's with a certain um, amount of time, too. Correct. So I just want to point that out. But in term, if you would like me to proceed with the review, I certainly can. If it's compliant, I'm willing to I'm forward. fine, too, if it's compliant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine with it. You are. Okay. Then okay. yeah. Okay, so we're in the Sugarbush uh, Shopping Center. This is located at the um, 
<laughs> yeah, I just uh, <laughs> cranked the mics up. Uh, we're at the Sugarbush Shopping Center, and the address is 2398 Franklin Road. Um, I'm sure everybody's pretty familiar with the shopping center that's located at the northwest corner of uh, Franklin and Square Lake. This is the proposed sign. As you can see, it's very a uh, minimal design. Um, they, they do some pre-prepared meals in which people can order and pick up. Um, that is a service that they provide. Um, and they are permitted to have a sign that is up to 33 square feet, and they actually come under, and they are proposing a 30 square foot sign. So it does comply. No variances would be required. It is an LED channel lettered sign, and it does comply with um, all the provisions um, in terms of mounting and projection, um, so there would not be any variances required. Great. It seems simple enough. And then the only issue is uh, putting a time limit on it because of the temporary sign. I just wanted to make that aware to the board. If, the, if you'd yeah. like to put any action, just making sure that they understand that needs to be removed as, as soon as possible once they get that sign. So do we want to give a certain date for that? Normally it didn't trying to think of how Brian used to phrase that back in the day. He used to do a lot of these. Um, how long did he allow for, or how long do you suggest usually to say it needs to be up by then to get rid of the temporary sign? Well, I think in general, I mean, if they're getting, if they're going to get approval um, for their permanent sign, I think the understanding would be that we would be expecting them to install that permanent sign within from the time it takes to get manufactured. Hopefully it has not been manufactured yet, seeing it has not been approved. So I would probably say 60 days, I would imagine. Anyone have any other questions no. or a motion? Oh, I move to uh, approve as presented, subject to 60 day time limit to install the sign or replace with and, and take the banner down. Thank you. Support. Motion by Clerk Brooks, support by Trustee Barnett. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That does pass. Thank you. Love all these compliant signs. <laughs> Next, we have site improvements with 2172 Telegraph Road mechanical crawl space and facade changes. So this proposal, we have uh, Mr. Calabat here, who is the developer of the project. This is a um, office building that went before the Planning Commission and Township Board, not once, but twice. Um, they have received approval, um, and now uh, Mr. Calabat is back before the board um, requesting the addition of a um, crawl space in the uh, below grade of the building. It will not change the overall elevations or height of the building. Um, it is, and I will have Mr. Calabat can give a little bit more detail and information regarding the use. Um, I do want to point out that within your packet and added to, I know the packet, or I added it to your space today, the uh, letter from our engineering department. Um, uh, we wanted to make very clear when the request came before us in the, uh, the, the crawl space that there would be no opportunity in the future to allow for that space to be occupied. So as what we've done as a result within the packet and on record is that we have our both our fire marshal as well as um, our building official indicating that based on the six and a half foot ceiling height that there would no, based on code, that that would not be an area which could be occupied. Um, so I just wanna uh, make that a matter of the record. And also um, I can have Mr. Calabat speak to some of the um, changes in terms of the visual appearance of the elevations. On your screen right now, you can see what was originally approved from the township board um, and you can see now the, the proposed change. So those are the two items that are before you. Um, I am happy to answer any questions, um, but really this is a matter of design as it relates to the aesthetics and the change of the materials or switching of materials, if you will. Um, and then also the consideration of the mechanical space um, below grade. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions and I know Mr. Calabat as, as well. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for your time. So to kind of recap and summarize the um, the necessity of the crawl space and the revisions on that aspect, um, basically we and we we were pretty well aware of this um, early on, but we waited until we had a geotechnical report with proper recommendations. Um, and as the report came back, the geotechnical engineers were really concerned about um, differential settlement in between the floor slab and the foundation system. Because this was building is on a on a deep foundation system, they were worried that if the slab were poured on grade, that that slab, because the soils directly underneath it were so poor, would settle and rise and heave independently of the foundation systems, um, which would cause cracking in the floor slab and and you know deformation. So within their report, they recommended and concluded that a structurally supported floor slab 
um, is required. So with that, when we're looking at structurally, structurally supported, there's really only two options. You've got an at grade, you know, a grade level structurally supported slab, which has a lot of steel reinforcing, a lot of additional grade beams to connect the flat areas to like the structurally supported ones. Um, that is very difficult to work with when you're dealing with underground plumbing. Um, for a first floor retail building, um, for the lifetime of the building, it becomes very cumbersome and, and very difficult to modify any of the underground plumbing. Because as you're saw cutting through your slab, you're not just, not only are you cutting through structural elements and removing steel, then when you replace that back, there's the undue burden of making sure that when you replace it, it's tied in, doweled in properly. Um, and over time, that could potentially degrade the quality of the structural slab. Um, so the other option is to ra you know, have a raised or you know, supported slab similar to the first and second floor, or the second floor and the roof above. Um, so we added a crawl space, which allows us to undercut and excavate additional poor soils underneath the slab. Um, we created, we designed basement, basically basement foundation walls uh, that the structure will sit on. Um, and then basically you have your steel joist, steel reinforcing going across the beams and supporting your floor slab. That way you can run under, you can run all your underground plumbing underneath there. And then when you need to add or, you know, modify your plumbing, you can just core new holes. You can core the holes directly in and you can install your underground plumbing. Um, so we, opted in for the latter of those two for obvious reasons. Um, and we, we created the crawl space uh, relatively larger than like a typical crawl space is like three feet, the minimum requirement, um, mainly because we're a construction company and many of the people that end up having to go down and work in these crawl spaces are our subcontractors. We know what it's like to work in those conditions. It is very difficult. So we've designed it in a way that it meets the requirements of a crawl space, the definition of a crawl space, and not a de uh, the definition of a basement. We've reduced it, we've kept it underneath the required uh, minimum clear height for occupiable space, which is six foot eight feet. Um, I think we are at the highest point, six, point, six foot four, I believe, to the underside of our, our steel joists. So for the lifetime, that, that space is, does not qualify as occupiable space. It's simply used for our utilities for plumbing, underground plumbing. Um, and then with that added space, we have also moved as part of our construction drawings, uh, the mechanical equipment and the fire riser down into the crawl space as well. Both of those um, do have appropriate clearances from both the fire department and the you know, fire review and the mechanical review as well. Um, the codes don't you know, accept them in those types of conditions. The electrical does not, so that stays on the first floor where it stays in an occupiable habitable space because electrical requires a seven foot clearance. Um, so that's kind of how the space will be used. And one of the other main factors of it is it, because the whole building has to be designed on um, deep driven pile foundations, is it also allowed us to reduce our pile depths, driving depths by you know digging down and excavating down and starting our, our driving process a little bit deeper um, so we've cut off, you know, seven or eight feet of uh, pile length across all the piles, which uh, if you look at the foundation plan in your packet, you, you can see the sheer number of those is, is a lot. So it's a significant savings there on that point, part two. Um, so the, the decision to move to the crawl space versus a, a slab on grade was mainly for ease of use over the lifetime of the building and also significant cost savings uh, in that design. So. Um, with that, we've also made a couple of modifications to the elevations, really using the same brick and stone as we had planned, the same color metal coping that we had previously designed. Um, the, the colors on the renderings look different, but I, I assure you that's just computer generation change from, you know, from one program to another. Um, the colors, the materials stayed the same. And we, we felt that um, the addition, the expansion of the of the stone as a primary building element was a lot uh, classier, a lot nicer than the previous design, which was primarily brick with stone, you know, just stone columns and a little bit of metal. This kind of, I feel, gives it a lot more, um, a better quality, better look. The, this, the overall design schematic stayed the same. We just kind of shifted the stone to be across the band so that it, it encompasses basically the entire first floor. The brick is on the second floor above, and that center section, we're gonna do uh, a black aluminum cladding system. 
which will really bring out the, you know, add a lot of character to the front of that building. And really here to answer any other questions you guys have. Is that the old one and now the one with the, the dark front is the new one? Is right? the new one, yeah, yeah. We, we kept the same design shape. So if you look the, at the old one, the stone in the middle is the same as the, the metal over here. We just kind of changed, we moved the stone, spread it out so it was, you know, we had a lot more of it. And then we added the metal, you know, increased the use of the metal. No, I appreciate the explanation for the crawl space. It certainly yeah. was helpful. And uh, the changes you have proposed actually find them attractive. So looks building looks good. Appreciate it. Thank you. That stone's beautiful. I get the, I'm, that is more expensive than bricks. So it's impressive that you went for a uh, higher cost on the outside usually. So that's good. Yeah. We, we thought we agree. I agree with Neil. It looks, it just really looks nice. a lot better. Yeah. I drive by all the time and look over there and go, there's nothing going on. <laughs> yeah, why haven't they started? We yet? are very excited to start. Let's <laughs> explain some of it though. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. There's, it's been a lot of challenges and, and our structural took um, over six months to get done. It was pretty challenging structurally for them to work out so you have plans to break ground soon as soon as you guys as soon as we can get the permits all, all uh i think engineering and building all other departments are, are ready to go so um, in the engineering did it reflect the no drainage issues would be caused by going with this plan yeah their their um memo is essentially saying that it's going to continue through the regular review process as it pertains to all the requirements oh. um and then so she's just ba basically saying that it's assuming that their final engineering review does not have any impacts she's okay with it okay yeah right so should we make a motion that's, that's subject to engineering reviews and approvals if you would so like that would be fine is it normally subject to that anyway right Correct. I mean, it's it's really going to be yeah. subject to all the appropriate permitting, Perfect. which is a standard of oh. approval. So yeah. Okay. But I just want to bring that to and your level of attention, just to make sure yeah. that you're aware. Perfect. All right. Do we have a motion? Yeah. Make a motion that uh, we approve as presented. Um, do we have to say anything about the crawl space, or, or is that just in the report, so that we're fine with that? Yeah, and it's part of the building plan record indicates okay. the the height as it's as it's it's part of the building plan okay. set that as a matter of record that that crawl space is what it is. Okay, so that's my motion then. Motion by Trustee Barnett. Support. Support by Clerk Brook. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. That does pass. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank yeah. you. Excited yeah. to see it go Look up. forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next, I lost my agenda here. Here we go. Next, we have just general business. Anything? I have nothing to add. Okay. Uh, so the uh, next meeting date is Wednesday, February 21st. I for a motion. We adjourn. Motion All by right. Clerk Brooks. Support. Support by Tracy Burnett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah.